like children forever, forever. So even today, even though this was wrote 3,000 years ago, even today, these curses are going to be up on the seed of those Israelites. And now we're going to go to those curses and see who do these fit. Because these curses, whoever these fit, it's a sign that that's the Israelites. Read this. Deuteronomy 28, 16. Curse shall thou be in the city. It said, curse shall thou be in the city. Any city that you go to, if you want to find a low poverty area, I mean a high poverty area, the, the ghetto, the hood, what race of people do you look for? What race of people are there? The Mexicans and blacks, right? But you remember who Moses was talking to on here? The Israelites, remember? Read. And curse shall thou be in the field. Who cursed in the field? Who worked in the fields for free for hundreds of years and they get nothing for it? Who's still picking fruits and berries and nuts right now and getting paid little for it with the threat of deportation? Who's the last hired first fired at a job, at the work field? What race of people? The, our people, right? The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Give me uh, 32. Deuteronomy 28, 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Who had their sons and daughters given to another people in slavery? Because they, the, they didn't keep the families together. They sold the sons and daughters off, right? What's going on at the border with ICE? What are they doing? Is it the Mexicans taking Mexican children or is another another people taking their children? Watch this. Keep reading. Don't leave you. I'm, I'm going to prove it to you real without a shadow of doubt because these might be coincidences. Right? Read. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. What that means, you're going to cry all day long after they take your kids, but you're not going to have the might to go take your kids back. Are they going to get their kids back right now? Do they got the might to go take their kids back? Did, in slavery, did we go get our kids back? No, right. We still spread out over the country right now. We got cousins that, that's across the country that you don't even know it's your cousin because it happened so long ago they split the family up. Right? But who did that happen to? Did that happen to all races? What race of people did that happen to? You already know. You already know. You got the problem is you gotta know now. That's what because it said the Israelites, right? But we started to get a, a, a draw a line to see who does this fit. This is supposed to be a sign on the Israelites in the last time. Give me thirty-seven. Watch this because we got you say what would you say your race is right now? Mexican. Mexican, right? Mexican means mixed people. Like I thought I was black. Black is a color in the crayon box. My pants are black. As dark as I am, I don't match my pants, right? So let's see what God said. Let's see if God said that was going to happen as a curse. Read. Deuteronomy 28 and 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. He said you're going to be an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. The byword is the key word right there. Byword means any name outside of your God-given name. Any name outside of what God called you in the scriptures. So if you read... No, God didn't call us Mexicans in the scriptures. He didn't call us African Americans and blacks in the scriptures. Right? But, because they were called what? Who was Moses talking to again? The Israelites, right? Israel, right? So, if he's talking to the Israelites, if the Israelites are getting called anything but Israel today, that is a byword. That is a curse from God that was going to happen to them, right? Give me 48. Give me a couple, I'm going to give you a couple more real quick. Watch this. 48. Deuteronomy 28, 48. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies thine enemies this is a key word therefore because you didn't keep these laws israel you're going to serve your enemies right remember that word read which the lord shall send against thee and god sent them against us because we remember we broke the law so he said these curses so he sent them against us read in hunger and hunger whenever you get hungry who where do you get your food from united. who owns united know what race but God, what did God call him? What's the key word I tell you, remember? What, he, what What's the key word I told you that he said? What, what did he call him? Therefore, you're going to serve who? God. Read it. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. That you're going to serve your enemies in hunger. So when you get hungry, you got to go get your food from your enemies, right? Read. And in thirst. And in thirst. It rained out the sky for free. Rain free for everybody. But if you're collecting in a barrel, you're going to have to pay a fine to who? If you get a drink out your sink, who you gotta pay? Who you gotta pay a water bill to? And then that's the whole, that's the point of it. To think about this, watch this. Keep going. What club was that at? <laughs> that was admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they. 
I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. Then after class, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. The hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. Now it's clear. Well, who did you have to get your clothes from? What race of people owns Under Armour? What race of people owns Nike? That you had to get your clothes from? Who owns the mall? What race of people owns the stores that we go to? God calls that race your enemy. Or the Israelites' enemies. I'm going to leave it at the Israelites, right? Read. And in one of all things, and in one of all things, a birth certificate, death certificate, a car, some rims, insurance, fishing license, hunting license, all that, if you want that, you got to go to what race of people to get it. Right? Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And it says that same enemy that you got to serve going to put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Who put yokes of iron on the blacks in the Hispanic, or the, the blacks in Hispanics necks? Your people's necks. Right? Don't be afraid to say it. That's the thing. You can't be afraid to say it. We just getting the Bible, the Bible making it crystal clear who he talking about. Ooh. Until he have destroyed thee. Until he have destroyed thee. Are we here? We here mentally as a people, but we mentally destroyed. Give me Malachi 2 and 7. Let's show how we destroy. Because he said he's going to put these on you until he have destroyed you. How did they destroy us as a people? The strongest people on earth, but we destroyed. How did they do it? You want to be, you want to live like the other nations do it, right? But God gave us a way to live it. Let's see how the knowledge that we're supposed to have that they took away from us that made us destroy. Read Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's how we destroy. He said they're going to put them on us to the destroy because we destroy for a lack of knowledge. What knowledge? Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Not only are we destroyed for the lack of, we reject this knowledge today. Today, the knowledge is being rejected that God gave us. Read. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. What's the knowledge we forgot? The law of thy God. I will also forget thy children, or thy seed, as he called it in Deuteronomy. So that's, the, that's how they destroyed us. They made us forget the law of God, that we are the children of Israel, and we got to keep the laws of God. That's how they destroyed us, and that's why we're in the condition that we're in today. Because we ain't doing what God said. God said if we keep, uh, hold it, give me 28 one real quick, and then we're going to get to the last curse to let you know who we are. This is what God said. This is how they know they knew how to destroy us. Watch this. Read. Deuteronomy 28 one. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken, diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. So this is the opposite. He said, and now if you do listen to what God say and do his commandments, what's going to happen? Which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. That's what will happen if we keep the commandments of law of the Lord. We will be on high above all nations of the earth. And that's why they put them shackles on, they, on your neck till they destroyed you and made you forget the law. Because now we don't even have a desire to be above all people on the face of the earth. We just want to make it day to day. We just want to be like everybody else. And we're supposed to be above or better than everybody else. We are the best people. We are the greatest people on the earth. We're the smartest. We're the most athletic. We're the most hardworking people on the earth. But we continue to be at the bottom. Why? Because God ain't walking with us. He said, if you break my commandment, I'm going to put curses on you. As great as you are... I'm going to let the basest people on the earth rule over you because you ain't listening to me. And that's why we come out here and we tell our brothers and sisters every day, stop breaking God's Sabbath. Keep God's commandments so that we can be the greatest people on the earth again. Everybody should want to be the greatest, right? Now, I'm going to get this last curse, right? This last curse right here, without a shadow of doubt, is going to show you who the children of Israel are according to this Bible. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. It said the Lord is going to bring you to Egypt again. Do you remember what the children of Israel were doing in Egypt? When Moses brought them out of Egypt, what were they doing before that? Okay. Now you don't know, we're going to let the Bible show you what they were doing. Watch this. Deuteronomy 5 and 6. I'm the Lord thy God. 
which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. From the house of bondage. What is bondage? Being bound. You know what I'm saying? Bound. And the house of bondage is slavery. Being a slave. Remember Moses said, let my people go. He was talking to Pharaoh, let, let my people go. Because we were slaves. The Israelites were slaves and he brought them out. So now God is saying what? I'm the Lord that God. 28. 28. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt or slavery again, again. So he said, I'm going to bring you into slavery again. How did the blacks get to America in slavery? What mode of transportation did they use to get them over? Boats, right? How did the uh, so-called Mexicans get to Europe and all that? On ships, right? Let's see how he's going to put the Israelites into slavery again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships. Ships. That's how God said the Israelites were going to go into slavery again with ships. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. The way I'm telling you about this promised land and the way I'm telling you these curses are going to happen if you break it, you're not going to see that promised land again. Have we ever been back to Jerusalem? Have we ever been back to West Africa where we were taken from? No, as a people we have not, right? Read. And there, and once you get off those slave ships, if you look at the map over here, we've got the transatlantic slave trade. We didn't just land in America. We landed in South America, the Caribbean islands, Central America, Mexico. All these places we landed, he said, even Europe. He said, once you land on those both stops, what's going to happen? And there you shall be sold unto your enemy. You shall be sold unto your enemies. What happened when we got off the slave ships? Did they just give us away or did they sell us to our enemies? It, it all. It, my money behind it all. And who, who, who did we get sold to? Yep. The same enemy that we read about you're going to have to serve in one of all things that God sent against us, right? You're going to be sold into your enemies. Read. For bond men and bond women. For slave men and slave women. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you or save. Buy means to save or redeem. No man going to buy or going to save you. Martin Luther King couldn't. Malcolm X couldn't. Marcus Garvey couldn't. Cesar Chavez couldn't. David Sanchez couldn't. All those great men that rose up trying to save us, they couldn't. Why? How do you know? Because we still right here in the ghetto. We still fit these curses that God said was going to happen to the Israelites. Cause, they weak, they? What's that? They wanted weak, ain't they? They want, they, they, the nations want us weak because as long as we weak, we're not going to be ruling over them. Right. But when we start keeping these commandments, we're going to rule over all the nations again. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth